I am uh, Bikuni Kusuma from Sri Lanka. Uh, before my ordination, I was Dr. Uh, Kusuma Devendra, and my ordination was held in uh, Saranath by the Korean Sangha in 1996. I'm Ranjini De Silva. 1984, I started, I met Ayakema, but 1987, the first nuns conference in Bodh Gaya inspired me to take up this role. This is Thursday, the 27th of June, 2013, at the Buddha Society of Victoria. So uh, today we're talking about uh, ordinations uh, in Sri Lanka yes. and uh, how, how the ordination process started in Sri Lanka. And I believe uh, both of you have been involved from the start of the ordination uh, process for Theravada Bhikkhunis. My first question uh, to you, Ayakusuma, can you give us a brief background uh, before you ordained? Uh, what did you do for a living? Were you married or single? I was married and I was a science teacher for a long time. And actually I studied molecular biology in USA. I wanted to know the beginning. What is the beginning of life? And at the end of it, I thought, this, I asked questions. What is the beginning of life, the molecular basis of life? And the scientists told me that is, it is not known. So science has yet to discover. Then I got frustrated having taught science for nearly 12 years. Then I came back to Sri Lanka and started studying Buddhism. So, luckily for me, I was appointed as an instructor in English and I continued to teach in the university for 20 years. And so I had the good fortune to uh, be in the library. That was my greatest happiness because it was new to me, the Buddhist philosophy. So much so that I did a master and a, two PhDs in Buddhism during the 20 years. And it gave me ample time and books and professors to study Buddhism. <clears throat> then for the subject, I was interested in the uh, nuns of Sri Lanka because my mother's sister was a nun. And also I read the uh, stories about the bhikkhunis during the time of the Buddha, the Terigatha, and I cried. Then I asked myself, where are the bhikkhunis? It came as a revelation that there are no more bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka. I didn't know that there are any bhikkhunis around. It took 10 years to do the first research on the 10 precept nuns. So what was the year when you when you became the librarian, what year did you did you start to do this research into the Bikunis? It was in 82. And this was as a lay woman? I was a lay woman and I was uh, teaching at the university. And then I was looking for the topic and I thought I had better do this because there is nobody who has written any, not even a scratch about the nuns of Sri Lanka. So I was struggling trying to get data from the Ministry of Buddha Sasana, from Sarvodaya, 
from the Buddhist Congress, from the YMBA, many who had done some kind of compilation, but there was nothing substantial to go by. Then I thought I will make that the topic for my research. Uh, Professor Bloss from uh, New York University came to Sri Lanka on a two-year uh, exchange program. He brought his students and he became interested in nuns. And then he was looking for and uh, trying to write a postdoctoral thesis on nuns. And it was impossible for him because the language barrier. The nun spoke only Sinhalese. And somebody told him, go go to Mrs. Devendra. Then I was known as Kusuma Devendra. And uh, she's also interested. And so he one day came to my house and invited me to join him on a joint study of this, uh, of the nuns of Sri Lanka. And he had all the <clears throat> facility because he had uh, the van and the driver and his family uh, going on this excursion all over Sri Lanka trying to locate where the nuns are. And invariably he pushed me to join this and then my, my work was to translate for him from Sinhala to English, the nun's story. It was good for me to go about with Professor Bloss and his family, and we collected data. He was a sociologist, so he taught me how to compile data. And that is how I managed to get my uh, data for my own PhD thesis. By that time I had already got uh, my master's in Buddhist philosophy and also my uh, I was struggling with this uh, the PhD in Buddhist philosophy. So after so nearly two years he went away and he also wrote a short skit on the nuns of Sri Lanka and for me it was the beginning of my career as uh, uh, studying the nuns. I had a first degree in Pali and so Dr. Lotta Moza sent me a ticket to come to Germany and study Pali Vinaya, Bhikkhuni Vinaya. It was not known to anybody in Sri Lanka. The monks had not even opened the pages. And then I had to go and stay with her in Germany in her apartment for three months. And we did extensive study morning, noon and night on the Bikutni Vinaya. So at that stage, were you... Uh well studied in Pali? Did you have much Pali experience? I had Pali and I had uh, uh, done the PhD of the Dasasil Matas and I had worked 10 years with the ministry of Buddha Sasana and uh, supported the nuns to get their identities. Because uh, it was Aya Kema who insti instigated me to do that. Because Aya Kema first visited me in my house as a lay woman. She was known as uh, Ilsa Lederman. And somebody in Bangkok or some said she wanted to visit Sri Lanka. And she looked for some person in Sri Lanka. And Thankfully, that person gave her my address. Mm -hmm. So one day she wrote to me and I said, my house is open, please come. And she came as a laywoman to my house. Yeah. And it was me who uh, helped her to become a, 
None in Sri Lanka. About the Pati Mok that she did study at the Korea, she printed in Sinhalese and we gave copies to all the ten Silmatas. I am the one who travelled with all ten from to India and by train overnight from Madras to Chennai to Saranath. And we were all reading, and in fact, I was also reading one of those papers. Pati Mok in Singhala, what you yeah. uh, translated, translated and Singhala. we got copies printed. So and they we were all, all knew, what, they all they knew what the Pati Mok was, and even I were reading that. We were all in the night in the train, all the time reading the Pati Mok. We training them so, to uh, receive that I can't, I don't know because anything about this, but this is what happened. Because the language problem is there. Yes. Korean because language. the language problem, there were some. I remember the Korean nuns were reading something, but we, we couldn't understand. Then it was translated by a special mm. translator into English. But there was, there was criticism then at the moment. I translated into Singhala, and then the nuns knew exactly what was going <laughs> on. So, so you, when you translated that, that you were a bhikkhuni at that stage, when you did the translation, you were a bhikkhuni? I was a bhikkhuni, I'm undergoing the tra mm. ordination, mm. and at the same time I'm translator to the nuns. So that was the first occasion. Second occasion was in Buddha Gaya for the second ordination, where I was in the Sima translating to the Singhala nuns the Chinese tradition whom they accept as the bhikkhunis from 98. So, so, so if I am no bhikkhuni, then... Why did they call the, her to the Sima and got her to do Sima, that? <laughs> That's a point. If I am not a bhikkhuni the, and I am an unordained person, then the whole ordination is invalid. <laughs> no unordained person can stay in yeah. the Sima. Yeah, some because nice. I was ordained yeah. that I was having the privilege of and being in the Sima. And my second PhD is on the path, Bikuni is on Vinaya. the Bhikkhuni Vinaya, where I have isolated all the rules with their commentaries in the uh, Samantha Pasadika and Kanka Vitarani, and all of it has been now. Uh, uh, recognize and I have put it down in my thesis. Are there any foreign monks who are scholars who support? Definitely, the... this is something I must tell you, Venerable Sir. It is Venerable Analeo. He has done a comprehensive study on the Bhikkhuni Vinaya because he reads Chinese. Yeah, this Venerable Analeo you mentioned, is he from Germany? Is this the German? Yeah, I think so. He and Bhikkhu Bodhi are working together. He comes and sees me in my ashram. He is so wonderful. I told him, you are a, a dream come true. Because he, nobody can contest him because he has all the traditions. Chinese, Korean, Pali, and he can, and the English, and he has a, he's a linguist. I had a big, big problem mm -hmm. because I wanted to know the feasibility of the Korean Vinaya mm -hmm. no, and uh, uh, with our Pali Vinaya. How far is it possible to get a Korean ordination? Then the Venerable Ripurasar sent me to Korea and for three months it was hell for me because they didn't speak English. And the Korean uh, ordination was done according to Dharma Gupta Vinaya, whereas Sri Lanka it is uh, the Pali tradition. But I had to study this for three months. It was bitter cold in Korea. I wasn't used to the food, the language. I think that was a great sacrifice. And then I went through this and then I studied their Vinaya and found that it is identical to the Pali Vinaya. They are Dharma Gupta Vinaya. There is a reason for that. The Bhikkhuni ordination uh, historically came from uh, India through Sangamitta. That's the daughter of Emperor Asoka. 
that was in the 3rd century BC. In the 6th century AD, that's 900 years later, Sri Lanka bhikkhunis traveled to China and established the bhikkhuni order in China. Then they uh, went by the sailing Sailing. ships and crossed the dangerous seas on the Silk Route. There were merchants going up and down China on the Silk Route to Sri Lanka. And they went in those, uh, Nandi was the boat, the person, and then they went and they established the Bikkune Sasana, the Sri Lankan Bikkune Sasana in China. And that is the same Vinaya that came, went, to, uh, went to China. The Bikkune Vinaya, the procedure, the organ, ordaining procedure was the same as was practiced in India during the time of the Buddha. So that's the lineage from Mahaprajapati to Sangamitta, from Sangamitta to uh, this, uh, her name is... Sri Lanka? No, no, Devasara. Devasara. Devasara was the bhikkhuni who headed the delegation to China and she took the ordination to China. So the lineage is Sri Lankan lineage. Actually, all the, from China, it spread yeah. to Korea, Taiwan, Japan, now, yeah. and all the Mahayana countries. But strangely enough, it never went into Burma or Thailand. Thailand. The, the Theravada country did not have Bikuni ordination from Sri Lanka because there was a problem about uh, traveling. You couldn't get to those places. Whereas the Chinese tradition was possible. And now (coughs) it is the Sri Lankan ordination procedure that is now being followed in China, Korea and all the countries in the world. So actually all the bhikkhunis in the world are descendants of Sri Lankan bhikkhunis. So in terms of sometimes uh, monks might raise the issue that um, the the tradition was broken, the lineage maybe was broken Uh, when it went to China from Sri Lanka. But what you're saying is... But uh, before it was broken, it had gone to Korea much earlier. Korean civil uh, Buddhism is very ancient. So before the lineage broke up in China with this communist regime, it had already gone to uh, Korea and established. It's later that it went to Taiwan. So the original recension from Sri Lanka is still in Korea. I understood this when I did my research. So I was very confident that the lineage is still there. So the the fundamentals, if uh, what I understand is correct, the fundamentals of, of the vineyard itself being the procedure for ordination is the same from the Pali to the Dhammagupta. Yes. So when it's gone through to China initially from Sri Lanka, yeah. and then it went on into Korea, Japan, to, yeah. uh, etc., even though the Chinese may have broken away from uh, that structure or the tradition. That's subsequently. It, that's after it had already tra- been transmitted to It has the been Koreans, established in Korea Vietnamese, before. Etc. So when you went back to, when you went to do your study in Korea for the three months, yeah. your research showed that the ordination procedure as followed in Sri Lanka yeah, is definitely. identical. The dual ordination procedure is followed in in uh, uh, Korea. So there is a little problem yeah. because some of these uh, later the modern pe- modern uh, those many who. Uh, write all kinds of things in magazines and books not knowing the actual circumstance 
of the Korean ordination and they try to undermine the Korean ordination which is not good because <laughs> uh, Korean ordination is very authentic and more ancient even to the Chinese ordination. So for some they, they may have um, um, proposed the view that an ordination is not valid for bhikkhunis unless there are two sangha in complete in, in terms of you have at least f five bhikkhus or at least five bhikkhunis. Both, both need to be present for an, a dual sangha ordination. Yeah. But is that, is that supported but, in the video? But I don't think that is a valid argument. In that case, we have to write off all the Korean sangha that their bhikkhunis are not ordained because they had their own way. Uh, because the, actually, the monks alone can give ordination. That was the Buddha's original intention uh, when he said, Anujana mi bhikkhave. Bhikkhuni sampadetu. Bhikkhuni. Bhikkhuni upasampadetu. It means at the beginning that. Now monks, there were no bhikkhunis to give ordination to bhikkhunis. So the first 500 were given ordination by bhikkhunis, bhikkhus. And later, for a number of years, it continued. The bhikkhu, bhikkhuni order was the bhikkhunis were ordained by the sangha, only the sangha. Later, when the bhikkhunis numbers grew, then the Buddha said, now the bhikkhunis are there in large numbers, and there were reasons for that. Uh, now you may have ten bhikkhunis to give you the first ordination, and then ten bhikkhus to give you the second ordination. That is how the dual ordination system began. But at the beginning, the Buddha gave, to start, it was very difficult, because there were no bhikkhunis. There's a question that's asked sometimes by um, monks that <clears throat> the first uh, ordinations by bhikkhus was carried out by the Buddha directly without a sangha kama. That is, that the Buddha himself would say, "Come bhikkhu," oh. and bhikkhu. that would be ehi bhikkhu, ehi bhikkhu would be the ordination for yeah. the monk. Yeah. Is there any situations where the ordination for the nuns, yeah, the yeah, bhikkhunis, yeah. was? In the same way, at the beginning, the same formula, it is ehi bhikkhuni, yeah. kam bhikkhuni. Yeah. Yeah. Ehi kam baddha. In the case of Baddha Kundala Kesi, she was given ordination as ehi bhikkhuni, kam baddha. That is mentioned in the Terigata. I am so happy that uh, Venerable uh, Upekka pointed this out to me. So at the beginning, there, were way, there was a situation when bhikkhuni ordination was given by proxy because the, it was a courtesan and she couldn't travel because her paramas were going to waylay her. Then the Buddha said, she doesn't have to come. You send a message and through the messenger gate. So that was the original intention of the Buddha. So this, that was after, that particular story was after the Buddha had said, there to be a dual Sangha ordination and when there's an obstacle for the nun to come herself to the Bhikkhu Sangha for the ordination on the second side yeah. with the second Sangha that he allowed a uh, another Bhikkhuni to travel as a witness to go to the Bhikkhu Sangha to, to receive on behalf of the other Bhikkhuni who is being ordained. Is that correct? I don't quite get what you are saying, Venerable Sir. What happened was that at the beginning it was difficult to get bhikkhunis who, who were knowledgeable enough to give the ordination ritual. So the bhikkhus were ordered to give ordination at three tini sarana gamana, which means they have to repeat three times buddhan saranangachami, dhamman saranangachami, sangan saranangachami. That is their ordination. The taking the refuge was the ordination for the uh, Pabaja. 
But was that the same for the uh, bhikkhuni? Yeah, the yeah. For all the bhikkhunis, up to the time of this dual ordination, they all took bhik, uh, either Thini Saranagamana or Ehi Bhikkhu, as in the case of Baddha. So it was the same for bhikkhus and bhikkhunis. But latterly, when the numbers grew, the Buddha gave permission for the bhikkhunis to ask the Sangakamma first and then get a, uh, with the monks. That was really the formality. The numbers of bhikkhunis, sometimes if the bhikkhunis are not available in this world, the still the Buddha did not nullify that the bhikkhu ordi- bhikkhus can give ordination alone. So in the case of Korea, in our ordination, there were about more than 10 bhikkhus. And there were, I can't remember the number of bhikkhunis, but certainly so the Maha Bhikkhuni and about three, four bhikkhunis or maybe five, I don't know. So many bhikkhunis were there. And many bhikkhunis were there. But I don't know about the... So uh, that is not a case to be questioned. I think that uh, Korean ordination was uh, extremely important and that was the major breakthrough for the second ordination by Taiwan. So they cannot uh, question that ordination. And there's another point I want to make out, that for the second ordination in Taiwan, uh, it was by, by Fokuan San, it was held in Buddha Gaya, they invited me into the Sima because I am a bhikkhuni. And I was inside the Sima for seven days because I had to translate the ongoing process which was done in, in Chinese language. And it was interpreted to the English. And then I had to interpret it to, the, to Singhala, to our Buddhist nuns who had come for the second ordination. And they are the ones, actually the big, the second ordination by monks was by Sri Lankan monks. And they were mere observers. They said, we don't want to participate and ask me to do the Sangha Kamma. And actually for them, I had to do the Sangha Kamma for this uh, ordination in Taiwan, the second ordination. And these nuns are the ones who came back to Sri Lanka. In Buddha Gaya, not Taiwan. Fr- from Ta- in Buddha from Gaya. Gaya. They came to Sri Lanka and started the center in uh, Dambul. Actually, they were given the ordination because of me, because I was in the Sima. <clears throat> so now, if you discredit the, the Korean Sangha, then, ordin- uh, then I am questionable as a Korean. Uh, I got the ordination from Korea. Then my participation in the second ordination at Buddha Gaya is also questionable. Has there been any monks? in Sri Lanka or anywhere in the world which can demonstrate in the Vinaya either the Dhamma Gupta or the Pali version are there any monks who can show that that Definitely. statement where the Buddha says I allow bhikkhus to ordain bhikkhunis it's not can right. any monk or none show that this statement was invalid Nobody has the answer. Nobody so. can say that it is not valid because the Buddha didn't say it is not valid. Hmm. Simply, did, did, he, did the Buddha change the rule? No. Nobody. Was there any change to that rule that he gave the allowance? Any? And was there any change? Did, did the Buddha change? rescind? No, or did no. Did the Buddha alter? No, no. He didn't discredit the first statement uh, and, uh, uh, injunction that monks can ordain nuns. That has not been discredited or dissolved. But he merely said, now in the circumstance, because there are many bhikkhunis, you could use it for, 
as dual ordination. But here comes a time when there are no bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka. So how can you have ten bhikkhunis? So we have to restore it. We if can't wait for something that is not existing anywhere in the world. So we can't wait for the Maitreya Buddha, Mitha. That's what they said, to wait for the next Mitha Buddha, next Buddha, to get ordination for the nuns. With the ordination of the Kunis, were there anyone, was there anyone who was uh, trying to make, us, make it not happen, to stop ordination from happening in Sri Lanka? It was. Yes, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> everybody. <laughs> everybody. Nobody wanted it. Nobody that, thought it was possible. That Nobody. was the reason why we held it in yeah. India. Sarat, and not supposed to them to come for three years. And they, that was the reason why we were held there. Captive they had to stay there, not to come years. to Sri Lanka. For two years, it was not, it were was not threats, safe. Were there threats made against, against you to come back? Yeah, they said no, no. It was uh, dangerous for us to come back. No, we didn't. that was the arrangement by, made by the bhikkhus to stay for three years because there. That's, that's why the why many nuns did not join yeah. us for one reason. But a lot of stories are rampant. I am so thankful to Upeka <laughs> and Venerable Jack. <laughs> because for this uh, document, yeah. because this is a historical document. Mm. Luckily, she and I are still alive to <laughs> say it. And if not, you have first hand information. Yeah, if she did not come, it because wouldn't happen. Recently, many stories. There was one Badra from. Out of the thing. Who, who couldn't take the two year training. She came before us and she said, I am the one who brought Bhikkhuni order to Sri Lanka. All kinds of uh, things are being peddled around and it has gone into the textbooks. Sri Lanka mm, different textbooks versions. that one Badra brought Bhikkhuni mm. order. Oh, she gave up, the, she was not accepted by the man. She was not accepted. When did you decide that you wanted to become uh, a part of the Sangha. When did you decide that you wanted to be a, a bhikkhuni or a novice? Uh, Venerable Sir, the, I really didn't think that I was going to be a bhikkhuni because there was no bhikkhuni order. And the idea was very remote. Even the word bhikkhuni was taboo. Nobody said bhikkhuni. They all said ten precept none. And uh, it was after the Sakya Dita conference, which uh, Ranjani, my friend, uh, organized and I helped her for two years to uh, hold that conference in Sri Lanka. So your then, original ordination, with huh? your Bhikkhuni ordination for you, was that done only with one Sangha, that is only Bhikkhu? No, there were about three or four, I don't know the number. But the I Bhikkhunis were there, but maybe Bikuni. the way... There were presents, <coughs> many Bhikkhunis were present, but the way it was done, maybe, I don't know. Uh, at that time, uh, the, there were many Bhikkhunis, there were 150 Koreans. So many. Bhikkhus and Bhikkhunis, more than 10 Bhikkhus. But the ceremony, we don't know. The ceremony was... was done in the Korean language and they had an interpreter. Uh, I had been in Korea three months and then I had translated it into Sinhala for our nuns and every one of them had a file where in Sinhala they knew mm. everything, all the questions and the answers. Yes. So when it was uh, given in Korean language and it was translated into English language, it was my turn to translate into Sinhala language, but at the same time they already knew it because they had it, yeah, all time. the files in their, yes. uh, in the, they all had their Sinhala translation. Yes. So the ordination was impeccable, it was very right. And I don't know why people should question that. And we especially publish it in magazines and uh, they are only, it's a private point of view, not knowing the facts regarding so the first ordination. So at the first ordination, bhikkhus did participate and in the ordination, that the first bhikkhuni ordination, right? 
at Saranath. Yes. Yeah, Kenya. at Saranath. There were bhikkhus, the bhikkhu sangha. There were more than ten bhikkhus. And they all agreed to, yes. to, to do the ordination? Yes. Right. And where did they ordain from? What traditions or...? They, they are the Chogyo order, which is the most... Uh, Korean. Mo, uh, most uh, recognized. They are uh, uh, meditative monks from Korea. Highly respected monks from Korea. Also, they have a Theravada bhikkhus <coughs> person? Huh? Were they Theravada or other traditions? Uh, yeah, yeah. There were about so many of our Sri uh, Lankan monks. While Palapi and the bhikkhu from US. There were Sri Pandita Bhikkhu and many others who were present in the they occasion. They were present, but physically the, present. Physically many. present, but the ceremony, the ordination was given by the Korean Sangha. Korean Sangha, and we had to wear the Korean robe because that was their their custom. We have to take it the way they are willing to give us. And <laughs> so that was the major breakthrough. Were they all within the Seema when the ordination happened? Uh, some of them were observers. The monks were all within the Seema. All the seema. monks? Okay. So all the monks were inside the Seema. Yeah. It's an open, open place. That was that open was an open Seema. Open place. That's the yeah. very spot where the Buddha preached the first sermon. Uh-huh. It was the open place. That in the vicinity of the uh, stupa, the Dhammika stupa. Dhammika, by the side of the uh, Dhammika stupa. And, and all the monks the who were there at that time, they understood that they were attending an ordination for yes, a woman to yes. become a bhikkhu. Yes, definitely. They understood that that was what they were there for. They yeah. were gathered for, and yeah. they were within arm's reach of each other. Definitely. Yeah, within the seema. Within so the seema. And even under- the monk, even the bhikkhunis were within the seema. So your understanding would be that because in the vinaya, there is a allowance for a bhikkhu to ordain a bhikkhuni, ah. even just by themselves. Even yeah. by themselves. Let yeah. alone having more than ten monks there. Yeah. Your understanding would be because the vinaya allows even one bhikkhu to ordain a bhikkhuni, yeah. that the ordination is valid regardless yeah. of whether a Korean monk or Theravada monk and, in the uh, seema. Also, Venerable yeah. Sir, I like to tell yeah. you this much, that the Buddha ordained bhikkhuni not Theravada yeah. or Mahayana. Yeah, only one. The bhikkhuni is a bhikkhuni. If she gets the ordination from monks or dual monks, dual de- uh, she remains a bhikkhuni so long as she <laughs> does not break the Parajika rules. So you cannot contest that ordination. They remain bhikkhunis. So the, what is the, the idea of the next ordination? In was that 1998? What what is the controversy with this? No, 1998. Actually, we had to give credit to this first ordination. If not for that, there wouldn't have been another one. Mm. To tell you frankly, nobody was going to touch this bikuni thing. Thank to uh, yes, it was a real um, yeah, great step that was taken. Biggest step that was taken after thousand years for our most venerable people Sarateo had the guts to do it no monk will do it though they will agree they will not never take that step and uh, we were criticized heavily and she was in Korea and that time I was and she was in still uh, not even a samaneri but we had to arrange a samaneri ordination as soon as she come we did the samaneri ordination and in a short time, because she was uh, taken as a very special case, as a vis- maybe as a visarada, they say, you know, because of her knowledge. I, remember, sir, I forgot to mention one thing. Mm. When I was in Korea, mm. I get a frantic call mm. from Sri Lanka, mm. from Venerable Vipulasara. Mm. He told me, uh, I am Stop. under fire, all mm. the monks are attacking, mm. this Stop. cannot be done. I'm going to cancel this ordination. Nobody is supporting me. Then he told me, then I was, th- I was doing the research. He told me, unless you take the leadership role mm-hmm. and take the uh, responsibility, these nuns are not up to it because this is an international one and a historical event. And then he told me, over the phone, mm. either you take it and 
take the leadership and then do it or not uh, do it or as i am going to cancel it then i by that time 150 koreans yes. have already booked their tickets to come to It's india so much to the roads for the ordination <laughs> and may venerable people sara is trying to uh, back out <clears throat> i said venerable sir Uh, if you cancel this But there will never be another ordination even at the risk of my life i yeah. will join this if you ask me please don't cancel it yes. then he put down the receiver yes. and that was how i was involved into this bikuni ordination yes. so i was invited by venerable people said that yes. there no way yes. that take the uh, leadership the there was a question of whether because I, it is no enviable position for me because i am under attack from all sides i said i have lived enough then i was nearly 69 years i said whether it is at the risk of my life anybody will kill me that's okay So that is how I became yeah. the first bikuni. Yeah, there was no one to take yeah, it. Yeah, because they we selected the ten, and she was the most qualified person. So they said, according to the age, we can make her the leader, and she's the first as the first so bikuni. This, because of <laughs> that, the second ordination was possible in Buddha Gaya. In, in my book. case, the uh, Korean ordination was publicized. in all the newspapers front page news yeah. and for months on end there were there was an ongoing argument for and against the ordination front page news you know and i was in the middle of it so this korean ordination was well publicized Un, uh, unlike the first ordination the sila ordination that is what happened when it was publicized soon after the ordination actually uh, uh, you know bsn it was on the first page all day. and on the news I, uh, television they say the bikuni order has been restored that the opening news and no. everybody got alarmed actually then the new first page all the korean robe and everything <laughs> then the monks started all the criticism came that time So there's a question maybe uh, about the nuns the five nuns who ordained in 1988 in oh. Shilai oh. um temple of Foguan Shan mm. in USA was that a valid or no not it was it is really no what happened was sorry yeah it was with ayakema no ayakema oh. was very but they nobody told but some lady just picked them up and went there when they returned nobody knew they joined the sila matas and did not continue no no so what happened was no, even if they don't continue uh, as bikuni yes whenever sir they are ordained bikunis if they have no parajika yeah. uh, commitment i mean breaking of parajika they continue to become bikunis they receive something whether they do the ritual or not <coughs> they unless, are bikunis uh, my understanding is unless a bikuni dresses as a lay woman and carries on like a lay woman they never no no they are still in their robes they are now even but now did, but they didn't wear the robe after they came they wear the dasa sila yeah, yeah they they were not allowed they to wear they this didn't, they didn't renounce no. their their bikuni ordination they were no. not allowed no no they didn't they renounce didn't no they didn't re- renounce it's just that they were not allowed to wear the bikuni robe they but were not allowed to i wear believe them. that they still belong to the yeah. uh, bikuni order even though they were unable to go through the ritual at least they were they not wearing the robe either if anyone has not committed parajika they continue to become bikunis whether yes. they are robes or not yeah, whatever it is Then oh fortunately i we can't forget bikku our dhamma talale dhamma lokatero the most venerable 
he was the deputy chief monk of the Amarapura Nikaya, scholarly monk. He became the Upadjaya of all these bhikkhunis, today's bhikkhunis. He said he was never interested in this bhikkhunis and he never studied. But because of this controversy, he started reading about this. The he Vinaya. said, Vinaya, bhikkhuni Vinaya. He said, ne <laughs> monks never studied because they never thought it will be wanted any. There are no bhikkhunis and there will never be bhikkhunis and we will not want this bhikkhuni vinaya to study. So nobody bothered about it to criticize. When the, some monks, um, everybody got alarmed and criticism started, then he said, he started going through the books and he said it was so, um, it's a miracle every time he touched, he get the books that he want. And he told me, he was a very senior monk, unfortunately he passed away in the 80s, he said, he was replying to all the articles. He is the one who was replying to all the newspaper articles. And finally, he said, he, he read the Vinaya three times and he found no fault in that. And he challenged to anybody who can find the chapter and verse, let me know whether it is against the Vinaya or Dharma, the Bhikkhunis. Thanks to our Vibhula Saradero. So I was very nervous. She was in Korea. I am the one who was coordinating with him. And he's calling me here and there, these various things. He, I used to go and say, Venerable, what is the robe that they are going to wear? They are asking this. Yeah? Now don't ask questions. If you want it or not, you take what, if you want, take what is given to you. After that, they will ask them to wear anything and go home. <laughs> Immediately after our Korean and, ordination, and we our were, Sri Lankan but, monks you know, gave us our and Sri Lankan robes and said, now we recognize you as a bhikkhuni, please wear our Sri Lankan robes. The same day, we changed immediately, to this, immediately. Uh, to this uh, 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 Theravada robe. So there was an invitation from a bhikkhu. Piyananda, Bhikkhu Piyananda gave me actually the ten robes and said Bhikkhu Kesri Dhammananda, then in... Was he there? That's the chief, that's the, the chief monk in Malaysia. Yeah, mm -hmm. and another one in uh, in USA, Venerable... Valpuna Piyananda. No, 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 he is in uh, Venerable Gunaratna. That is, they were not there for the yeah, They were not there, Hena, but they are Hena, very Hena. positive. They were very positive. That's the uh, uh, Guna Ratna from uh, yes. in America, right. yes. and the Bhavana right. Yeah, But uh, personally they were not present, but while Pulapina and the Thero was present, present he, physically was, present. He, he physically and he had the presence of mind to bring the ten robes, which we never thought of. And he gave and me, also, said, asked them Pandit, to change into this robe. Pandit, uh, uh, Deva Siri. Deva Siri. Deva, that's what I was telling you. Highly educated monk. Uh, it Parajikas were read by him. He read the... Uh, the uh, four Parajikas, mm -hmm. and then he made it uh, mm -hmm. acceptable mm -hmm. for the uh, Pali tradition. If a girl wants to, or a female wants to become a nun from a respected family, is supposed to be, I mean, well to do family. The monks, the mother goes to the monk and say, Venerable, uh, my daughter wants to become a Oh, don't send your daughter to join those women. Huh? So they were discouraged? They were discouraged, yes. I know the cases. They come and tell me now. Uh, the, I, then one day, uh, doctor's mother, she was supposed to be a very good daika of the temple, told me, oh, what are you doing with these now, women? Huh? I don't want to say Potten again, the women who carry these, uh, what do you call the yeah. bags? Yes, Potten again. Bundles? Bundles. Yeah. Just like, like, like going down. Carrying the, clothes yeah, to yeah, the, like, the river to clean or something. Like, like, washing yeah, like, like walking with their yeah, belongings, you know. Oh, women, yeah. Yes. Why do you Wonders. want, what are you do, trying to do this? I said, don't say anti like that. You must go and see their story. You just don't believe it. No, I said, there are so many good nuns. And, Huh, bring them and show me. I said, if they can't come to you, if you want, I take them to show you. Like that, you know, that was the impression. There's another lady from Colombo, she always say that she comes to our center, Sakyadita center now. She says, at the age of 15, when she wanted to be a nun, and when the mother went and told a senior good monk in the temple, she said, don't, madam, don't send your daughter to join those women. So that is the thing that I want to break at the conference, that we really achieved it. 
and I must say all the resolutions at the end of the conference we have achieved now. Actually, the dentrecept nuns had started 100 years before, in 1905, when a very famous woman in Sri Lanka by the name of Sudharma Chari. Catherine Dialis. She was Catherine the Alvis, and she was a Christian. And uh, <coughs> we were under the British we a colony. And uh, Catherine was not allowed to visit the temple. So secretly she went with her ayah to the nearby temple and she became Buddhist. Then her relation, they, she was an aristocrat from Kandy and uh, close to the governor of Kandy, Blake, Governor Blake. And uh, she uh, was excommunicated because she became Buddhist. Then at that time many Burmese nuns were visiting Sri Lanka, mostly to Kandy, to see the tooth relic, to worship the tooth relic. And she got friendly with these nuns and without the knowledge of her relatives, she was not married, she walked, uh, she went away by ship to Burma. There she became the first Dasa Silmata. What does Dasa Silmata mean? Ten precept nun. Is that the same as a seminary? Uh, not it, seminary. Is seminary is uh, novice. This is, uh, this is ten precept nuns. They cannot wear the bhikkhu robe, bhikkhuni robe. They only wear a yellow colored cloth. So they are not the same as Samaneri, though both of they all practice the same way, the ten precepts. But they have no ordination as a Samaneri. I was so sad. The nuns were not recognized. They had uh, they were not ordained. Uh, and they had no access to any of the privileges of the bhikkhu. Uh, they had no sangika property, no sangika dana belonging to the sangha, no robe and bowl. They can't go pindapath. So they merely lived in seclusion in remote areas and they had few devotees around who would bring them some food. As long as 1984, I met Ayakema and I went for retreats with her. In 87, she invited us for a conference in Bodh Gaya, which I had no idea, but uh, few of us who, who meditated with her and she invited we went with the idea of going on a pilgrimage more than the conference, but it was a nuns conference she who organized and she was very keen to help the Silmatas the, to come up. So she, as she invited, we went there. Only there I saw the nuns from all traditions and all nationalities met in Bodh Gaya under one tent as the nuns conference. His Holiness Dalai Lama inaugurated and it was uh, the time I was listening to all the talks given by all the speakers mentioned about Sri Lanka and the Sangamitta theory and the heritage and the Bhikkhuni order and all the big things which I was not aware of. That really moved me. I was not a speaker, I was only a participant, but I was really moved by all what they mentioned. That time I noted everything and at the end of the conference seven days, seventh day, we formed an association and named it Sakyadita, daughters of meaning the daughters of the Buddha. And I remember still uh, I came and knew me as I was already doing some voluntary work here and in addition to my profession. 
She told me, Ranjini, you can help your sil- Dasasil Matas when you go home to Sri Lanka. I feel sorry that we did not pay enough respect to the Sil Matas that time. So after attending this conference, I took a different turn and I started talking to them and inquiring. And first thing I did was to organize a training of some Sil Matas in a remote area. When you say Sila Mata, is that short for Dasa Sila Mata? Yeah, Dasa Sila Mata, 10 precept nuns. Yes, Dasa Sila Matas. Um, Because I was in another organization, we had the free medical training, first aid training. So I said, with those resources person, I said to organize a training of these nuns to do some hospital service. Uh, That's no organization as such, but on my own I started. So that was good. Then uh, it was after 87. But I have been always thinking, now since they were mentioning about Sri Lanka and uh, our Arhat theories, when so many thousands of Arhat theories had been in Sri Lanka living in Anuradhapuri. So I wanted to have the, that inspired me so much. I really think was thinking one day I must invite I must invite these people to Sri Lanka. That idea went to my head. One day maybe all are talking about Sri Lanka. Why not we invite these international women to Sri Lanka? But it just went like that till ninety one, when Thailand Professor Chatsuman that was becoming Dhammananda now organized a women, Buddhist women's conference in ninety one in Tamsat University, Bangkok. When the invitations came, I quickly ran to the Buddhist Association, uh, Ministry because they participated, the Commission of Buddhist Affairs officially participated at the first conference, he was aware. I went up to him and said, why not we attend this and we'll have a meeting. I will call, no Ranjani, we can't have such meetings here, we can't. I said, no, you can't, but I can I do it for you? May I invite those who attended the first conference? Can we do it? Then, will you give me the office? I said, yes, okay. How we organize the conference now? So, it was uh, really a dream coming true to me. And for my fortune, I met Ayakusuma, Ay- that time Mrs. Devendra. So, she was free and she was having Anagarika life. And she was at a meditation center. And I invited her to stay with me. And she said, oh, I'm not interested in conference. I said, no, no, we'll do it together. Come and help me. And it was, she was the greatest moral support I had. And whatever I did, she used to appreciate me and give me all that, <laughs> say, go ahead, it's nice. good, good, good. So that kept me going. <laughs> then nobody knew what I was doing. <laughs> Finally, to get the approval when I came, that is very important. Uh, I only wanted the permission because it's an international conference, the government approval. We had to get the approval from from the board board members. Board consists of the three chief na- nayakas of the three nikayas, the three. What, 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 the, the three, th- what does a nayaka mean? The chief monks, the uh, chief. Uh, what do you call the abbot uh, chief uh, of the? Different six Siam Nikaya, we have three uh, you know, sects. What, what are the three sects? Uh, Siam, Ramanya, and Amarapura. Okay. Then we have the three great monks, the three most senior chief monks. They are representing the Uttari, the Supreme Council of the Buddha Sasana <coughs> ministry, <coughs> including some professors. And fortunately, there was one Silmata also was included in that. But this commission of Buddhist, uh, Ministry of Buddhist Affairs, they said, no, this is very difficult. I said, there's nothing to do with the Sil Mata. This is an international network of Buddhist women. The Buddhist women around the world talking about Sri Lanka, and we want to have a conference, meeting them here. It's only, in, why can't we? Then she showed, he showed me a um, magazine where one of the Sil Matas had produced. On the cover, there was a bow leaf. And uh, tearing that, uh, Buddhist nun, nun is appearing. Tearing the bow leaf, a nun is appearing. The, oh, 
So she said, you know, this type of things have really upset the monks. And now they won't give anything for the Sila I said, they don't want to boost the Sila Matas, the, the ten precept nuns. So they, it's very difficult to add. I said, nothing to do with the ten precept nuns here. We have to invite, have this conference. He said, no, then in that case, you better prepare a letter and ask for the board. But I submitted at the board. In the meantime, we uh, we formed a committee to organize the conference. I gathered all the ladies, Buddhist ladies, and we had a meeting and we started the branch of Sakyadita in Sri Lanka and to uh, announce that we have we want to organize the conference and I need their help. And uh, uh, we formed a committee and with few of members, we went and met the most uh, senior monk that time, Amarapura, monk who was closer to Colombo, we had a discussion with him and I told him all about the um, Sila Matas and what they can do to the society and if we can empower them and all these things and uh, that we want to have this conference. He said, oh, all that is good, but uh, you have, can't touch on one subject the, about the big issue of the bikunis. I said, we did not have that actually in that ma in our agenda. What I was keen is to call these nuns and the, seal of, the ten precept nuns to empower them and to give them the acceptance from the society because they were not accepted in the society that time. Actually, they did not have the power that we as lay women had in it, at the temple. You will always find them behind or cleaning or sweeping under the Bodhi tree or sitting under a you know, when you go to Anuradhapura for or somewhere in a famous pilgrim, they'll be sitting under the Bodhri and some will be asking for something, you know. So they were treated like almost um, very low. Could they, could the Dasasila Matas live without using money or were they, they, were they su well supported for dana, for the, for no. the food? No, not at all, except their families helped or something, or some maybe in a remote area, villages, but then most of them, actually they had left their home because they didn't know what to do, and they did not have any ad such administration or something. So it depends on the teacher or somebody whom they knew another Sila Mata, so they go and live the same way. They, they had no uh, similar... Um, I, I mean, the instructions. Uh, so uh, different people cooked and ate, some people baked and ate, some people had uh, family support, like that, different. Uh, then that is why they did not have the acceptance from the society. After meeting and attending and listening to all these things, I wanted the, to get the acceptance of the ten precept nuns before the bhikkhunis. This is the aim of the organizing the conference to get the four requisites and to say that they are not just left their homes and renounced, they are also having their paramitas to become like that. So after the first conference, was it the case that the Dasa Silamatas were starting to become accepted yeah. within Sri Lanka? Yes, of course, the great impact on them. We invited the full hall to the main conference hall of the Sri Lanka we invited an, over 300, the whole place was full of the Dasil Mata. We did not invite the monks actually, so many people. I only invited one monk to give the five precepts, Kirama uh, Vimala Jyoti, Bhikkhu of the Buddhist Bikku Cultural Bodhi. Center, and Bhikkhu Bodhi was there. I invited <coughs> him to the stage, you know, he happened to, he came, or some other I sent invitation. Then Bhikkhu Dhamma Ratana, uh, Bhikkhu from Singapore, from the big Singapore library. He supported me. He came and saw me once and then I told him what my plans were and then he said, don't worry, go ahead. I said, it's expensive to hold an opening at this hall, but he said, no, he will sponsor. So he came home and gave me the money to pay the advance and he attended with a group of Singaporeans, the li Singapore library, yes, and uh, that was a great support which I can't forget. So at that conference, only those three monks, Bhikkhu Bodhi, the Bhikkhu Dhammaratana, and Bhikkhu Vipala Jyoti was on the stage. All the Silmatas were full of, full in the hall, and from different districts. Then I had to go to the, but they had the names in the ministry, and different districts, I got the list of the 
games and I go to all the districts to send. So all of them came in buses, buses and they, we arranged all the dada and everything and they, I have the videos, unfortunately I don't have it here to show how they are walking into the hall and uh, international um, participants are getting off the bus and um, how they were ushered into the hall with drumming and all that. And finally, the president of the <coughs> Republic of Sri Lanka also agreed to attend the conference. Uh, so, during that time, while I was, we did not have computers, that is very important, to no emails. Uh, I had only an Olympic typewriter which I used to just sit and write and send letters by our mail letters, our mail letters to Aya K. Um, and Vinu so, I So who was, who was first involved with setting up Saki Data? Who were the main people? Aya K. Ma, Vinu Balekshi and Ch Professor Chatsuma. Those are the three founders. Champa. No, those three, those three founders. They attended. Those and, are the three. And, and the lay women and lay men? Lay, men, lay, lay women, lay men also few years, the Commission of Buddhist Affairs and few men. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, a lot of other great scholars were there. His Holiness was there. Uh, so that is how it started. The next conference they organized in Ladakh, 95. And it was a really, a, adventure, adventure for us. And I travelled with all the Kuni, that time Mrs. Devendra and few others, all seniors, seniors, and we were there. As we landed, we didn't have oxygen and we were falling one by one, falling sick, and then we were laid to be down. And anyway, we had an under a tent, because Sangasena organised it. There they elected me as the president of the Sakedira International which I never expected, but then I refused. I said, I am no professor, I am no scholar, please don't. She said, no, no, nobody had done as much as you have done to Sakedita, we want you to accept it. So I, up to date, say it's not for me. It was given to me to do this work. That time, because I was made president of Sakedita International, they invited me to speak on uh, Sangamita Day, in, in the Buddhist women's thing in Colombo. There also I just said in front of everybody, very soon these Silamatas are not the ones that you are not imagining them to be. They are also capable as monks. They are not just bad women or street women or the, like the way you think that they have not become nuns, but they, are, they also have their own sensor, they also have their relatives, they also have their family, but they have renounced because they have their paramitas. For 10 years, I went uh, almost every second week I am in the ministry. So I had to stand at the door and get ushered in. And to the commissioner, he was one early Ratwatha, he was a high court judge professionally, but he was the commissioner. And I told him, no, you have to look after the nuns. You must start a separate section in the ministry to deal with the nuns because they are neglected. And that's I have to remember. At that time, <coughs> the president of Sri Lanka was J.R. Jayawatana. And when Dr. Bloss left the country, before he left, he said he was going to inform the president that he did this extensive survey of nuns. I said, why? You have to take me. Then both of us visited the president. And I was talking to the president. Why is it that you don't look after the nuns? And for I was just after my research, I saw all the nuns in that situation. And then I went on pushing and saying, they are so poor, they have no identity, they have no support from monks or nuns or even lay people. Why is it that you are not taking an interest on the nuns? And then he said, I'm not going to put my finger into that. Then I, I couldn't understand why. I went on 
talking to him again and again. Three times he said, Madam, I'm not going to put my finger into that, the president of the country. Then I was so frustrated. Dr. Bloss had recorded all of it. And he said, Mrs. Devendra, I didn't think you would speak so much. But at the end of it, he said, I will send my wife to interview you because he had worked this after about maybe one hour. And then he went away and sent his wife, Mrs. Elena Rajab, uh, Jayawadana. So I told her all of what I had to say. But she listened very carefully. She's the first lady. And uh, she said, can you write this to me? Then I said, oh, all right. Then I came home and Professor Bloss, me and my husband, Asoka Devendra, three of us drafted a letter to the president, uh, to the wife, to saying that these are the conditions of the nuns. I, in fact, told her, in the past, the king looked after the monks, and the queen looked after the nuns. So I sort of pushed her to think that mm -hmm. she should take this. <clears throat> and then I drafted this 11-page letter and sent it to her. But that was the Black July. Terrorism was at its height in Sri Lanka. And I never thought I'll ever get a reply. But three months after, when everything died down, I got a letter from the president, Mr. Jawadan, he acknowledging my letter to his wife, and then he had said, you please now go to the minister, Mr. Hurule, minister of Buddha Sasana, and work on this. So I was very happy I ran with this letter from the president to the ministry and met the minister for Buddha. He, he sent me to the uh, commissioner, that was Mr. Vattate. And that's how I started working with Mr. Vattate. I said, Mr. Vattate, now you have got the okay from the minister and the president. Up to you to do the work, now you have to start organizing a separate section for nuns. And I was in and out of the place. That's a big joke I want to say also. One day he told me, Kusuma, you didn't tell me you are Asoka's wife. I said, why should I be known by my husband? Apparently he had met my husband the day before, and they are classmates. And he laughed at him and said, what are you doing with my wife? Then he said, who is your wife? Kusuma. Up to that, he never knew who I was. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, he said, why didn't you tell me you are Asoka's wife? <laughs> then after that, he said, hereafter, you don't have to stand there and get ushered in. You open the door, come right inside and sit down. See the power of your husband. That is how <laughs> I managed to tell him all what I had to say. Mm. I used to tell him the future generations will curse you if you don't do anything for the nuns. Because now we have all the powers. And that is how he started a separate section. And all the nuns got their identity cards. That was how during the conference, Sakadita conference, the nuns were ready. Mm. Because I have done uh, ten years of work with the nuns already. And then uh, we started on the conference. And Ayakema is the one who pushed me. Yes, really. Currently in Sri Lanka, are bhikkhunis recognized? Are they given the same ah, type of ID cards that a monk this, will have? This is a big question, mm. Venerable Sir. At that time, there was no major issue, and I, for the last 17 years, have never been confronted by anybody. Of course, no one will confront me because I'm sure of my facts. Nobody knew as much as I did, 
about the bhikkhuni vinaya. But unfortunately now there are large numbers of bhikkhunis and there is quite a big issue. The monks are not going to recognize the bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka, which is a great tragedy. And then the latest I hear is that they are going to bring a legal suit uh, against the government prohibiting bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka. Oh. Which is, I can't understand. Does that mean ordaining bhikkhunis in Sri Lanka? Or does uh, that mean even the bhikkhuni can't visit Sri Lanka? I don't know what it is. That is where it is today. It is too, but it I has gone up too uh, far ahead for them to prohibit now. <laughs> it will never no, happen. No, but if the government is no, uh, forced to, because you know, my venerable sir, the Ministry of Buddha Sasana comes under an advisory board. All monks, they are a power group. They can dictate terms to the ministry, and the government has to abide by that. So this is, these are the ones that are going to... Um, uh, so are you talking about the Mahanayakas? Mahanayakas are oh. also in it, but, but many more, others. There's more than just the Mahanayakas? Some months. of the Mahanayakas, I don't know whether all of them agree, mm. but maybe the majority agree that the Vikuni order must not be held here in Sri Lanka. And it is a small group. It is not the wish and will of all the monks in no, Sri Lanka. the monks have accepted Monks them. have accepted it. They, privately, I have no one mm. against me. The monks themselves can't because go against Because as a university person, I have been teaching thousands of monks, fully ordained monks in my class, and they look up to me as their teacher. So, actually, I come from a different strata, mm. not like the ordinary Dasasil Mata. So, for me, I have no personal problem at all, but I feel sad for the next generation. <coughs> no, but if they give, uh, make litigation and make, and force the government to uh, uh, lawful, Ill, make it illegal. That's How can the they be disrupt them or what? Yeah, that is the reason. Most all, reason all, all the Buddhists will walk on the road. <laughs> I will take the lead. <laughs> you better lead the show. I will lead the show. If I, <laughs> that will never, I will never allow it to happen. So, is there anything? They is can. there anything that uh, you don't feel has been covered with this, the questions that you've? you've answered so far. Is there something else that you wish to put on the record about this situation? Situation? That I don't know. I, the situation is expecting and people are telling stories. I don't know. But uh, if the government will recognize it is so good for the nuns. Mm. They are not monks to support training us. training centers and equal support as much as they get, give the monks, which is not done up to now. But we get uh, good support from very good monks. But the same time. at a private level, we get support. Yes. So community acceptance. Actually, you need only 10 monks to make it law. So not all the monks in Sri Lanka have to uh, agree. Mm. Still Ten every year. monks um, makes it law. Yeah. Still, the every convention. year we have ordinations going because on. It is a convention. Uh, it is a samuti. It is not an absolute reality. It is only a, a conventional reality. The ordination ceremony and all that uh, mm. thing. That is just for the discipline of the nuns. Mm. But the absolute re reality is the philosophy of the Buddha. Whatever I said and done in Thailand, we couldn't dhamma nanda, becoming a nun, becoming samaneri, she came to Sri Lanka and all that. That time, there were very, very hundreds and thousands of monks in Thailand were against her and a lot of 
opposition. But she went ahead and now, see, in Thailand, there are 100 nuns now, more than. Every year there are ordinaries. Now she is getting round. She has that uh, media and the um, power and the and all that writing and all that ability. She is going ahead. But I think the Sri Lanka situation is not so easy. I tell you one Because thing. the monks in Sri Lanka are very educated. And they are not going to have people dictating terms to them. Luckily for me, I went underground. I didn't contest it at all. So there's nobody who is against me. You remember that time I, can, I spoke to the, one of the chief Kuttugudu Dhamma Vasathiru, Amarapura Nikaya, the Malik Adhikari, what is he? The big, uh, he said, if the Thailand, Siam, second, they accept, then you can do it. I remember that very, very well. So I said, we are, we are in Sri Lanka. He said, because they are, our Bhikkhu order has come from Siam. So Thailand. Yeah, yeah, Thailand. Mm -hmm. So I remember this word now, the Thailand is picking up. I'm just waiting. I remember those words, I recollect. He said, if the Thailand is accepting them, then no, po no, no problem for us. It's, it's <laughs> a per but it is a personal view. Yeah, yeah, but anyway, it is, it's I remember that. It's a point of view. Yeah, point of view. That's not a I by know. and large. I know. Mm, none of these things are by and yeah, large. Yeah, nothing. All these things peddled about are just personal views. Just take it and die you down. So the main question would be, does it accord to Dhamma Vinaya? Rather than, does it accord with yeah. the country? Yes. Because if a country Leave becomes it. corrupt, then does that mean it is invalid? Yeah. Like yeah. If, if if in Thailand, if they yeah. ban Bakunis, does that mean it has to be banned in the Sahaja yeah. Nikaya in Sri Lanka? Yeah. No, no, no. Because they already got the ordination from us. From Sri Lanka, no, now they are. There is why the even article he is trying to even penetrate. Even she got... Yeah, Mananda so got yeah, she's very grateful. She wants to come get close. I mean, she said Sri Lanka and Thailand together. Mm -hmm. She's grateful. Anyway, the Bikuni, another thing is when we had the first conference, the Sidama, uh, the 10 Bishop Nans who attended the conference, met the Bikunis for the first time that I forgot to mention from all uh, over the world. From Tibetan tradition, Korea, Taiwan. And the word Bikuni, Bikuni, they heard the Bikuni word Bikuni. So after that, the, they tell me, Madam, we didn't know that there are bhikkhunis. Now we heard the word. They said, then only they got that confid confidence that they also one day can become bhikkhunis. Now I'll ask you both this question and to answer separately. Do you feel the bhikkhuni order will succeed, Aya, in, in Sri Lanka? I don't get, do you think the bhikkhuni order Will succeed? Will succeed? Will succeed. Grow? Ah, in well, Shalaka? I I even can't say, because the world is corrupt. In this corrupt world, something real good cannot mm. exist. So I don't know. I can't tell you. Yeah. And Ranjani, what is your yes. view? Yes, to our experience for the last few years, it has gone very steady. But nothing is going to be permanent as the ma. Depending on the. Uh, Vinaya and mm -hmm. practice, it will stay there as the, anything the, else. Even the bhikkhus are getting less and less. And the bhikkhus say it's good to have bhikkhunis because there are no bhikkhus temples in the remote areas to serve the people. So uh, there is a need for the bhikkhunis to grow. And how much they say that the women are coming to the front now. <laughs> But if they, I think the women have a chance mm. to to accomplish and also to take over this burden of uh, yes. keeping the Buddha world yes. alive. That's the natural and tendency. Yeah. There is a natural yeah. tendency. Uh, at the moment, they seem to be very, very uh, ready for that. Mm. They are educated. Mm. There are many doctors who will join the order mm. if it is recognized. Especially yeah. in their field. Yeah. So, uh, it is a question of this support from monks. Mm. It's very important. Yeah. That is only the for the acceptance. In the time of the Buddha, there was not even one monk who uh, protested the starting of bhikkhunis. Mm. 
So I am surprised why monks are protesting. Why are they against the bhikkhunis? In the time of the Buddha, not one monk said, we don't want bhikkhunis. That was no question. Mm. But why now? Every day I get two, two emails, even now, asking them how to become nuns. Every day I get, I get emails, they find my email address. Even now I had open, open, I always find one. The whole world. Many Some women people from around. other countries, some Sri Lankan women, they say, I have everything, I good, but I want to be a nun, how to join, how to become, uh, some practice, all these things. So, this is the trend. So, women coming up and trying to become nun, and nobody can stop. They can have any liti litigation. They are immaterial. I don't know. In my view, I conclude as <laughs> bhikkhunis will survive, but nothing is permanent as anything else, <laughs> but it will continue. I am so thankful that within my lifetime that I was able to divulge the facts that led to this very important ordination. Yeah, thanks to her. And Thank you, Pekka. Yes. I'm ever grateful to you and Venerable Jag yes. for giving us this opportunity to speak up. Yes, and one I thing. was so... Uh, I thought I have finished my job. I have already got ordination and brought ordination. That is it. I am with my meditation, I have no more interest. But for the sake of history and documentation, very important. There was no chance for me to speak up. And today is a very, very important day in my life. As much as that day I became ordained, because the facts are stubborn and the history cannot be altered.